Let's continue our discussion of polycythemia. In this video, part two, we discuss the other two forms of absolute polycythemia, including secondary and altered oxygen sensing. Another form of absolute polycythemia is secondary polycythemia. This type leads to elevated red cells due to an increase in EPO because of hypoxia or low oxygen levels in the tissues. There are several causes that may lead to a compensatory increase in EPO production. Some of these causes include living at high altitude, where there are lower levels of ambient oxygen, chronic heart disease like heart failure, where the blood isn't adequately pumped, lung diseases like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, where ventilation is compromised, Sleep apnea, or suspension of breathing for short periods during sleep, leads to a rise in EPO from not getting adequate oxygen. Certain neoplasms or tumors that secrete excess amounts of EPO. The most common EPO secreting tumors include hepatocellular carcinoma, renal cell carcinoma, adrenal adenomas, and uterine neoplasms. Kidney problems such as cysts in the kidney, and other conditions that block the flow of filtrate or urine in the kidney, such as urinary tract stones, may lead to hydronephrosis or swelling of the kidney. Hydronephrosis causes the kidney to secrete extra EPO. Also, conditions that lead to decreased blood flow to the kidney, such as renal stenosis, can cause the kidney to secrete extra EPO. Genetic defects resulting in a 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate deficiency causes hemoglobin to hold on too tight to oxygen and is therefore not adequately released to tissues, leading to a compensatory increase in EPO release. Treatment with or abuse of anabolic steroids will also increase levels of EPO. Carbon monoxide exposure may also lead to polycythemia. Carbon monoxide has a greater affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen does. Therefore, it displaces the oxygen and causes the kidney to release more EPO to compensate for the low oxygen levels. Chronic carbon monoxide exposure may be from smoking or from occupational exposure to exhaust fumes, like for those working in parking garages or for taxi drivers in congested cities exposed to lots of exhaust pollution. Treatment for secondary polycythemia focuses on relieving the hypoxia. Continuous low-flow oxygen therapy may be used to help correct the hypoxia. This treatment also helps alleviate pulmonary hypertension, which is important to delay the onset of lung or heart failure. The last category of absolute polycythemia is altered oxygen sensing. This type of polycythemia is due to mutations in several different genes that brings about an increase in EPO production. Examples include Chuvash polycythemia, PHD2 erythrocytosis, and HIF2-alpha erythrocytosis. To understand the mutations that lead to these types of polycythemia, let's discuss the normal healthy PHD-VHL-HIF axis that makes up a negative feedback mechanism that regulates EPO levels based on tissue oxygenation. Hypoxia, inducible factor 1 alpha, abbreviated HIF1 alpha, is located in all nucleated cells and normally acts as a transcription factor to upregulate the expression of genes that code for EPO. In cells that are well oxygenated, Prolyl hydroxylase, domain 2, or PHD2, uses oxygen to hydroxylate a proline residue on HIF1-alpha. This hydroxylation allows von Hippel-Lindau, abbreviated VHL, to attach to HIF1-alpha. The attached VHL acts as a marker for destruction of the HIF1-alpha by a proteasome. Thus we see that when HIF1-alpha is hydroxylated, it is targeted for destruction. 
And when it is not hydroxylated, due to low oxygen levels in tissues, HIF1-alpha sticks around longer and upregulates the production of EPO. Mutations in different components of this axis may result in excess EPO production and polycythemia. One example is Chuvash polycythemia. This results from a mutation in VHL. This mutated VHL will not attach to HIF1-alpha. Without attachment, HIF1-alpha is not targeted for destruction by the proteasome, and HIF1-alpha levels rise and causes an increase in EPO despite normal oxygen levels. PHD2 erythrocytosis is caused by a mutation in PHD2. This mutation doesn't allow the HIF1-alpha to be hydroxylated, and therefore VHL cannot bind to HIF1-alpha to be marked for destruction. Consequently, HIF1-alpha levels increase, which in turn causes EPO levels to rise. HIF2-alpha erythrocytosis is a mutation in HIF2-alpha. HIF2-alpha has a similar action as HIF1-alpha, but it is located in cells involved in erythropoiesis and vascularization. Mutations in HIF2-alpha impair HIF2-alpha's ability to be hydroxylated. VHL is unable to bind to unhydroxylated HIF2-alpha, which in turn doesn't allow the HIF2-alpha to be targeted and broken down by proteasomes. Therefore, levels of HIF2-alpha rise and act to increase EPO expression. In summary, polycythemia refers to an abnormally high red blood cell count and can be categorized as relative or absolute. The high hematocrit level in relative is due to loss of plasma volume. Absolute is high hematocrit due to overproduction of red blood cells in the bone marrow. Absolute polycythemia can be further categorized as primary, secondary, or altered oxygen sensing. Primary results from a mutation in the JAK STAT signaling pathway and can be classified as either polycythemia vera or PFCP. Secondary is due to an increase in erythropoietin production due to conditions that cause hypoxia. Examples include high altitude, chronic heart or lung disease, sleep apnea, neoplasms, kidney problems, genetic deficiencies, anabolic steroids, and chronic carbon monoxide exposure. Altered oxygen sensing is due to mutations in several genes involved in sensing oxygen levels in the tissues. Now for some questions for review. Pause the video now and think of your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.